What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Summit Tech once again, and today we have a little bit of a different video. We're going to be covering a new startup that is basically offering the ability to monitor your data as well as monetize it. And with me today is Mike Audi, and he is one of the lead. Are you the owner or lead, I guess? Programmer, both? A little bit of both? I'm the founder, the CEO, the programmer. Well, every the guy who makes it. <laughs> there you go. So we're just going to chat with him about what the project is, what it's about, and what they're trying to accomplish. And from my understanding, Mike, it is essentially going to be an app that runs on your cell phone. It's so either Android or iOS, and then you will be able to sign up and see where your data is being sold to or monitored. And then you'll be able to also figure out how to prevent people from using your data. And then as well as finally, the most exciting option for a lot of people is sell your data and actually earn money for selling your data, as opposed to just companies selling your data without your knowledge or consent. You got it. The premise of Tiki is that users should be able to make choices and be in control of their data. It, it seems like a silly con like it seems silly to say it out loud because it seems so obvious, right? Like what it's our data. Why do we have no say over how it's used, what's done with it, what like why are companies able to just take it and sell it and make money on it and we don't get remunerated for it. It's a crazy just when I say it out loud like that. But that's the fundamental premise that we building Tiki on is that one place where in a couple seconds you can make decisions about your data. I don't want to build an app that, you know, sucks up your eyeballs. The whole point is, you know, think of it more like your calculator, where you go in there, you set up your settings, your preferences, and you get it all set up, and then we'll take care of making sure that you're in control of your data against how you want to use it. So we believe that there's really three parts to that. There's the seeing your data, which is, you know, do you even know what Facebook collects on you? Like, and when you do find out, it's going to be shocking, right? Like <laughs> it's it's a lot um, and it's kind of scary. Um, the second piece is being able to control that, right? Like every app has dozens and dozens of settings. Like um, I often find that users didn't know that they could turn off facial recognition tracking in Facebook. There's a setting that you can turn off um, and you can turn it off and they'll stop tracking you. The downside of that or upside to some people is that it'll stop auto tagging you in photos point of Tiki isn't to say you should turn off that switch, but rather give users the knowledge and ability to easily choose, hey, I don't want them tracking my face, or I'm cool with you tracking my face, but I don't, but like, but you just need to know, right? It needs to be easy and obvious for users to make a choice. And the last piece is, look, your data is worth money. It's worth a shocking amount of money. The example I give to a lot of people is, don't you think there's at least 10,000 companies in the world who would pay $1 for your data? Like, yeah, well, if that was the case, then your data is worth ten thousand dollars, right? So right. it's shocking what it's worth. <laughs> so where'd the idea come from, or was it just an epiphany one night you woke up, or is there a story behind that? Uh, you know, I wish there was a better story. There's a uh, <laughs> so I've been obsessed with user data and data for my I don't know as long as I can remember since the early two thousands. My back like my background is building big data solutions for fortune 500 companies that use data to create you know positive user experiences for customers um, so my background's in data a lot of user data and how do you use that data for good things versus negative things um, so i'd been obsessed with user data and user data marketplaces and all this for a long time but what really clicked for me was sometime around like september october my dad was like, hey, how do I get on Signal? What is Signal? What is this thing? And I quickly realized, oh my God, other people care about this. Like, not, no longer did the engineers care, but the average person, and it's not even just the average person, the general population, everybody suddenly, it just clicked. Like, you know, the social dilemma was a forcing function. Right. Yeah. But, you know, everything that it just had been boiling and boiling up, you know, even going back to Cambridge Analytica scandal with Facebook, it just kind of hit a tipping point where everybody in the world became like aware of the shady things that have been happening. <laughs> um, and that's where it came from. It was like, Oh my God, we can do something about this. Time. Awesome. So the big question I'm going to have that a lot of people are going to have, I think is where is the data stored on that is gathered by your app or does your app gather data 
or user data, and if it does, I assume it has to to be able to go out and see if there's any data out there. And then how does it store it and how does it send that data to the companies that you potentially want to monetize it with? Yeah, this is a this is a very unique thing about how we're building it um, because it comes from kind of a, a fundamental security principle of mine where, and you'll hear this a lot from technical people who build, you know, secure systems. If you don't think you've been hacked, you've been hacked, right? It's a, a common saying. Um, so my view of it is don't store data, like the, which is a crazy thing. Like how do you build a data company that doesn't store any data? Um, but the, the principle behind that is your phone is already collecting your like Facebook data, for example. Let's use Facebook, but this applies to any app or website you visit that has data on you. So the way Tiki works is that you connect it to whichever application you want, and it uses their API to pull down that data locally to your phone. So it's on your phone. It's not in our cloud. It's nowhere we have it. Like, I can't tell what it is. It's on your phone. Um, so it's secured and encrypted on your phone locally. Um, that way, if you lose your phone or whatever, it's still protected, just like, you know, we'll Bank it on the protection that iPhone users have where they won't even turn over phone records to the government no matter what. So it's encrypted on your phone. And what we do is we allow, we run what we call privacy models, but they're effectively fancy math that calculates user insights and preferences that are anonymous. So let's say we want to know what users favorite shirt colors are. Clearly mine's black. I'm always, I seem to always be wearing a black shirt. <laughs> um, Matching today. Yeah, <laughs> black V-necks. <laughs> um, so that would be, so we run an algorithm on your phone locally that looks at your data locally on your phone and says, hey, this person prefers black t-shirts. Not like Mike Audi prefers black t-shirts, but person whatever prefers black t-shirts. And so now we've got an insight that is what the business would want if they had your private data, but they haven't actually touched any of your private data. We ran it on your phone. So what we do is we now sync that data to the cloud. So if that got lost or whatever, they never know whose preference that was. They just know that there's a person in the world who prefers black VDEX. And we're aggregating that data on a data graph. So that way companies can look at how different preferences correlate to one another. But again, they're all anonymized. So you're basically saying how many people prefer this or that, how many people like this or don't like that. It's all about what the business is that's what businesses are trying to get to anyways. They're not trying to figure out your specific thing, but we've just decentralized the process of collecting the data and aggregating that data. Um, so we put all that stuff out there. Um, we use a blockchain to provide users with ultimate transparency and facilitating all of that for both A, payments, but B, an audit trail. Like this is one of the things that I, I don't know why everybody else doesn't do, but um, every time anything is calculated about your data and the resulting insight and where it goes and what happens to it. It's all logged on a blockchain that we run. That way as users, you can go in and see what happened to your data throughout the entire history with Tiki. And you can also revoke access. You can delete things. You, you have the ultimate control over your data from that. So we've secured your data locally on your phone. We've only created anonymous insights that can't ever get traced back to you. And then we've tracked that entire system on a blockchain. Okay. And we wrapped that nice UI. So that brings up a ton of talking points. One's going to be, you mentioned blockchain. Is there a particular chain that you're building this on top of? Like, is it on, is it a token chain, like built on top of something like Ethereum or are you using something else? Building a custom one for our use case. So okay. We're building our own blockchain. Um, it comes out of a couple reasons. The probably the most Fundamental reason is the number of nodes on our network and the number of transactions is exceptionally high in comparison. Like Ethereum, I think has like 8,000 nodes or something like that. Well, we've got 20,000 users already signed up and we're going to have well over 100,000 come May. So, you know, there aren't a lot of blockchains that are lightweight enough that you can run on millions of users' phones, especially, you know, we've made a conscious decision that we believe decentralizing technology isn't a US only issue. And so we went to people all over the world. We have people, we have hundreds of users in Nigeria to India to the Philippines. Um, and so everybody's got different phones and different technology and different needs and different currencies. So we needed to build a really lightweight blockchain that can run without adding a lot of stress to an application that's distributed all over the world. 
So we're using our own blockchain. We don't need a ton of the other stuff that's on typical blockchains. It's how you get it really light, right? We Our blockchain only has to do our use case, which is distribute tokens for payment and track who did what. <laughs> that's it. Um, there's no, you don't need to store a ton of data on it. You don't need to do complex uh, proof of stake and things like that. It's very much simplified down to allow decentralization um, to a lot of devices. And so is that the nodes are going to run on the user's phones for syncing yes. and all that? Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. And then is that is that blockchain based on a like a previous blockchain? Like I know, for example, like you can spin up your own chain of like say um, Polkadot, for example. They'll allow mm -hmm. you to build your own chain. Are you doing that, or is it ground up? I guess. So for the MVP, we're probably we've started building on top of Hyperledger um, right now. I'm I don't know if it'll actually stay that way. Um, we've also started in parallel building out our own like from the ground up blockchain, which is likely where it'll ultimately end up. But that is a process that takes months and rigorous testing and vetting before we would want to do that. So in the short term, while the user growth is scaling, we're able to use something that's a little more heavier, um, that's not quite as perfect and optimized. So the, think of it like a two-step plan. Um, right now, we're currently I'm building it on top of Hyperledger We'll see if when all the users get it at the end of the month, if it's actually still on Hyperledger, um, I might move it again, but um, we're, we're testing it out right now on Hyperledger um, with the ultimate intention. It'll probably become truly ground up Tiki. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, that's, that clears all that up. I, I, one of the things you mentioned that I actually kind of wanted to pick your brain on because I've, I've, um, there's, there's always been this point of contention of like Android users versus iPhone users. And for the, for the basic user, like let's just say the general population, I know you mentioned like iPhone's user data policy. Um, can, could, what are your opinions and thoughts on iPhone, iOS user data policy versus Android? Well, it's a funny way to... So I'll tell you... I'll, I'll give you the, the probably the the way I think about the problem is Apple's business model is selling devices and they make money selling devices and then they use those devices to open up additional revenue streams like the App Store where they take it again they're taking a piece of transactions that are happening on their platform. Their business model isn't driven on using data to create value. Google's fundamental business model that powers like 90% of their business is <laughs> ad driven revenue from search. Um, and it's all using data uh, based on search or what YouTubes you watched or where you went to better curate ads um, and traffic. So that right there tells you a lot about user data privacy and policies and everything, right? Like it's very hard to, if your whole business is based on using user data to be really good at securing and private. <laughs> it's just a much harder problem, right? Like how do right. you use someone's data to drive your business while also still maintaining privacy and security? Um, they do what they can to do the best they can for it. I think sometimes, you know, questionable as well, but um, you know, I found it's very rarely due to bad intent. It's very due to negligence or it's a hard problem when you're dealing with petabytes of data and things like that and lots of apps and that tens of thousands of engineers touching your code every day. So Apple is more fortunate in terms of just their business model allows them to do things like make a hard stance against ad tracking technology, um, which they've taken with 14.4, which is a milestone approach to what has been one of those things that engineers have known about for a long time, but the general population, it just didn't quite click that oh, all these apps that you have are built on top of these SDKs and all those SDKs are collecting like your location data. And those companies, the way that they're still in business and able to provide those those apps is by they sell that data to all of the different advertisers. And so you don't even know like apps that we're all using and comfortable using are actually selling our data. And it's not even the app we're using that's selling the data. It's some <laughs> plugin that they used in their code that's selling your data. Uh, so, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. So let's talk about monetization. First would be the monetization for the end user, and then I'd like to pick your brain on monetization for your company and how you guys are planning on moving forward with that. Yeah. Um, 
you know, the example I gave earlier of I'm certain there's 10,000 companies that would pay $1 for your data, right? It's user data is it's wildly valuable and it's undervalued currently. Um, so once you start talking to businesses, you quickly realize like the sophistication in terms of how they, how and what they use on your data is actually very low. It's one of the reasons why they need all your personal data. It's just, it's hard to do. There's, it's just, it's a new world. Um, and it's very hard to handle large volumes of data and calculate the insights you need for a business. And as a business, you want to know simple things like what are customers saying about my product and how are they using my product and what do they like about my product? Um, you know, where do they live? Those kind, those are more important than, you know, very specific. This one person thinks this one thing. Um, so the sophistication is kind of low still, at least in my opinion, in terms of where we can get to. Um, the availability of data is very much consolidated with massive players. Like the big guys do a lot of really crazy things with your data, and then it falls off very steeply as you get down to you know, the restaurants that we all love to visit and things like that. And we miss visiting the bars and like <laughs> the people who actually need the data about their customers to better build their businesses who are most reliant on it actually have the least availability to it. Um, so your data is worth a lot to a ton, a ton, a ton of companies. Um, and if it can get packaged correctly, you can actually get to the right source. Right now it's got to go to company A who aggregates all the data, they sell that data to company B, a marketing agency who packs it up and turns it into an insight, which then sells it to some you know big fancy company for a ton of money. Um, and so all along those steps, your data is gaining value. Um, we believe that the user should sell their data direct to the company who needs it. Cut all of that out of the middle, right? For starters, right. like you don't need any of that. Like just allow the user to go straight to the businesses and allow the user to choose who can buy their data, what they can do with it and why they can do that, right? It should be, it's your data, it's not their data. They don't just get unlimited and explicit control to do whatever they want. So your data is worth a ton to a whole bunch of people. And it's not like worth a lot to any one person. It's worth a little bit to a lot of people, um, as well as, the more tiki users we get, the more all of our data is worth, right? Your data and my data, not worth a whole lot if we put it together. Your data, my data, plus now 20,000 tiki users' data, it's worth a whole hell of a lot more. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we think about the data value problem. I guess more specifically, though, because uh, I do see, like, how much do you get paid as one of your FAQs? Uh, do you want to discuss that a little bit? And then, like, specifically, I'm curious how you guys are going to monetize the app. Yeah, okay. So we are shooting to get users paid out of the gate $10 a month on average. It will depend on what you're willing to sell, right? You can use Tiki just to see and control your data and never make a dollar and just be like, hey, don't sell my data to anybody. Perfect. Totally cool. Some users will get more than that, and they'll be able to make more. On average, we're shooting for $10 a month out of the gate. Um, I believe that within 12 to 18 months, we'll get that up to $100 a month for users, uh, which seems like a crazy amount. But again, you know, when your data is worth thousands, getting, you know, a thousand a year is not a, out of the question. Got you. And then for y'all's monetization specifically? Yeah. So this will be... All of this is an evolution, right? Um, so I'll t all of my answers, <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm giving you what we, what it is today. Um, we're very early in the company. We started the company. We announced the vision in January. We formed the company in December. So we've been a company for two and a half months. Um, <laughs> we are... We, built, we decided to do it differently out of the gate. So we wanted it to be 100% user focused, which is why we announced the vision. We started talking about what we're doing before ever building anything. A typical company, like they figure out what they want, they build the product, they put it out in the world, they get some feedback on it. We did the opposite. We put out the vision, got the feedback on the vision, used users voting on features in the app to actually build what the app's gonna be. Um, so our goal is to keep it 100% transparent and 100% user focused at all times, which means we want users to get paid all of the revenue based on their data. So we're not taking a piece of any user data. We're not taking a piece of the transaction. We're using our current plan is to charge businesses a additional transaction fee, similar like a credit card company, right? Like um, when you use Visa as a business, they charge 3% on top of whatever it is, right? Like company page, like user paid company, $10, 
you also you got your ten dollars, but then you also paid uh three percent, so thirty cents to whoever for facilitating that. Okay, cool. Right. Um so we're gonna charge businesses a transaction fee. We're shooting starting around ten percent. We'll see where it goes uh in the market as okay. it start as we start to do it, right? <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. And then uh, for the nerds, what kind of encryption are you using for the data on the device? So on your device, it depends on where it's being stored on the phone. Okay. So, so we're using, so iOS and Android both have encrypted vaults locally on the phone to store data. So it's stored in those native vaults, which are the most secure places that you can store things on the phone. For the blockchain, you're given your own encryption key which is stored, which we use that encryption key to encrypt your data that is stored on the blockchain. Now, we don't store your sensitive data on the blockchain. We don't actually take any private data of any kind. We don't even store your email addresses for this reason. So don't lose your security encryption keys, um, as probably anybody is familiar with a wallet. We'll make it really easy for you to be able to save and back all that stuff up, but don't lose them because that is your, that is your key to the whole thing to unlock it. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Not your keys, not your wallet. So not your keys, not your data. So that's good to hear. Um, and then, so one of the questions I had is what about targeted advertising? Is that even possible with this? Because it sounds like it's typically just sending out s demographics. Like I wear a black shirt. I'm a 34 year old male in uh, Texas, United States. Um, how do they, are the companies able to do targeted ads kind of like, you know, YouTube will target, will have your user information to target you. Is, is yeah. that going to be possible for the companies to do? So maybe one day um, it's questionable whether it's needed um, ethically in the world. So right. um, if you like um, the way, the way I think about it is if you want to, if what you want to do is target people who wear black t-shirts, then that's all you need to know. You don't need to know who specifically. You just need to know who has black t-shirts. Like you need to know, I want to target people who have black t-shirts and you need to have a way of getting in front of people who tar who know that you have black t-shirts. As a company, you don't need to know who's who in that list. Um, so that's like a more of an ethical answer to the question. Um, so we're starting with truly anonymous data. Um, there are some questions like Tiki's fundamental principle is we believe users should be able to choose and so choose what they want to do. Um, so it wouldn't shock me if one day we offered users the ability to sell the targeted identifier for companies to target them directly and allow users to opt into that and they would get paid, you know, whatever the market rate is for that. Um, I don't know. It's not where we're starting currently. I think Coming out of data, the hardest problem to solve is getting the insights from data, not actually what to do with that and how it actions to take as a business. The most difficult part is how do you calculate those insights and those insights never, ever need any targeted information. Okay. And then um, finally, when's, what is the release schedule looking like? I know you guys were planning something here coming up, if we can kind of cover that. Yeah, we're shooting to get the beta going with users. So we opened up the beta feedback channel uh, about at the end of February for users to start voting on what's in there, and we're collecting feedback. If you're not on our Discord or Telegram or, or um, Signal apps, join us on those if you want to get really early previews at what the screens might look like and all of that. Um, but the first users will be able to start uh, to close beta um, end of this month at the latest i'm shooting you know our original target date was the 15th i might be a day or two behind at this point but i'm coding as fast as i can um we hope to we'll start installing the app with by the end of this month at the latest but hopefully within a few days around the 15th of march and then we hope to launch the full public app in april so if you want to get in on the beta sign up now because the people who are signing up on our website right now that is the beta group. So you will have initial early access to the app before anybody else. You'll be able to give us feedback on what you like, what you don't like, what apps you want to connect to it. You name it. We're taking all feedback. <laughs> awesome. And then how do you sign up? Go to mytiki.com uh, slash son of a tech. Hey, and, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Get on the beta list. Um, get on there quick and soon because it's, I mean, demand is overwhelming. 
Cool, cool. So, so full transparency for my audience, uh, this is not a paid interview or anything like that. I was actually genuinely interested in what they are doing. I think that it's going to be an awesome service. There is talks of sponsorship pre-roll type things in the future. And I wanted you guys to have full transparency of what the app was and get it from the guys themselves that are working on it. So that's pretty much where I'm coming from. I think it's a great project that you guys have here. I think it's really neat. I think that it brings that concern for user data to the general population, which I think is needed right now. And I appreciate it a lot. And I wish you all the most success. Thank you so much. It's been an all. It's been an, it's such a pleasure meeting you and being able to talk to you. Your channel is amazing, um, and all the content you put out is awesome. Thanks, dude. Well, we're gonna sign off, guys. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.